under file I'm going to select new and I'm going to come here and I'm going to type the width to one and the height to one and click OK and what we've done we've opened an image but if you look as hard as you can it's very difficult to see where it is so I'm going to come here to zoom and I'm going to go fit in window and now you can see the image I'm choosing a pencil and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this to a pixel of one and click in here and you see it fills the entire image now if I come back to here and make that 100% that's the image there can you see very difficult to see so I'm going to come here and I'm going to magnify it and magnify it again and that's the size of a pixel when it's expanded but of course if I come down here and put it to 100% it's there right in the middle you most probably won't be able to pick it up on the monitor but that's the size of a pixel what I'm now going to do to make life a little bit easier I'm going to come here change this to 4 and 4 click OK and again I've created an image and it's here you may be able to see that but what I'm going to do is to magnify it within GIMP and you can see that I have a square and I'm going to actually draw in it with the pencil one pixel size squares and what you now can see we have a 4x4 four four image where each square is the size of a pixel if I now put it to 100% you can see it's in this region here let's just magnify it again and you can see I've got the 4x4 four four, which means there's 16 pixels in view there now I'm going to fit this in the window as you can see and it's clear now to see the 16 pixels reduce it again to 100% and it's tiny again but in that tiny space you can see that there is in fact 16 pixels so we should now have some idea as to how big a pixel is on a monitor and we can see indeed they're very tiny and it depends on the size of the monitor to how tiny they're actually going to be and the quality of the monitor and so on here you can see an image I've loaded up into GIMP and I'm zooming into a particular section of it and I'll continue to zoom in I'll carry on and zoom in one more time and if you look you can see that we have pixels showing and you can see the pixels are different colours to reflect the fact that there's different colours in the actual image but again we can see the size of the pixels now what I'm going to do I'm going to zoom and I'm going to fit it in the window again and here we can see the image back at its full size hopefully it is now clear how a pixel looks on a screen however what is the size of a pixel on a paper photograph when you set out to print an image on paper GIMP needs to know how big each pixel is as it relates to the paper we use a parameter called resolution to set the ratio between pixels and real-world units such as inches millimeters and so on in the previous video in the playlist we come to image and we went and chose this selection here scale image and that allowed us to alter the size of the image in terms of the number of pixels in its width and its height for displaying on the screen if we want to dictate what the quality of the photograph will be the image will be on paper this is not the one we choose the one we choose is this here print size you select the print size and what will happen you will get this dialog box appearing here before we consider the dialog box let's remind ourselves as to the size of the image we're dealing with if you look here you can see it's 3456 pixels by 2304 pixels well the first thing we can see about this particular dialog box is what it's called here look it says set image print resolution and if we come to here you can see it says print size so when we look in this region we can see that the width is 1219.2 what you may ask well if you look here this is mm which means millimeters and if you divide 1219.2 by a thousand it's 1.2 ish meters so in other words that's a large photograph isn't it I mean most photographs are six inches by four seven inches by five when you have them printed so this is the actual size of the image as it would appear on the printer however 
that's providing we have a printer who can deal with that size of image, which is obviously not in most people's pockets. But the thing is, we can see what the size of the image is here, and this is the key for this XY resolution here, because here you can see that we got the number 72, and over here that's saying pixels per inch. Now what does that mean? Well, what it means is that we actually have a situation whereby on the printer we have 72 pixels printed per inch. Now that will give a certain quality of printout. If you have more in this area, more pixels per inch, then you've got more information packed into an area. So for example, if you move this up to 300 pixels per inch on printed paper, you've got more dots, if you like, on that bit of paper. So your photograph is more detailed. And of course, it depends on the size that you print the picture out as well. But the key is, the bigger this number here is, the better quality you're going to have in terms of the compactness of the amount of information that appears in an inch on the actual piece of paper. Now, if you actually come to this button here and click on it, what you're able to do, you're able to change this from millimetres to inches to points to centimetres to metres and so on. But I'm going to change this one to inches. And when you do, you can see that we have the changes reflected here. We have 48 inches, as you can see, by 32 inches. I'm now going to divide 48 by 2, and here you can see the division symbol is the forward stroke. When I actually press enter, what's going to happen, the 48 is going to become 24, and the 32 is going to become 16. But before I actually press enter to action this, I wish to remind you of the X and the Y resolution. You can see they're both 72, meaning 72 pixels per inch. Right, so I've just clicked enter, and you can see the width is now 24, and the height is 16. But if you come down here, you can see that the X and Y resolution have gone up to 144 pixels per inch. So in other words, what we've now got for a smaller print size is a bigger X and Y resolution, which means more pixels per inch. So we can see that in terms of what's going to happen with the printer, the quality has just gone up. Let's now have a look what happens when I divide the width by 4. Well, you can see the width and the height are 6 and 4 respectively. But if we come down here to the resolution, you can see that the X and the Y have both gone up to 576 pixels per inch. Now that's obviously a much higher resolution. And we have a photograph size of 6 by 4. And we can see as we've reduced the size of the image, we've got a higher X and Y resolution. But just a word of warning here, you know, it's okay having this huge resolution here, but your print is going to be capable of putting this many pixels per inch. So it's not quite as straightforward as I'm suggesting here. But what I'm showing you is what the software is doing for us. You have to now have some practical considerations with respect to your printer. So you could have here, for example, a huge resolution and have a lousy printer and you won't get a good photograph under those circumstances. To give you a guide as to what resolution actually means, if you have an image with 300 pixels per inch or over, the printed image quality will be very high and individual pixels will not be noticeable. If the resolution was somewhere between 200 and 150 pixels per inch, then you might start to notice the actual pixels. But the image will be fine so long as you don't inspect it too closely. Now, if values are lower than 100, then you'll get a very coarsely printed image. But that's not too bad if what you're trying to do is produce images for signs and large posters that will be viewed at a distance. So it depends what you want the printed image for. But you've got an idea now, hopefully, of what resolution means within GIMP. But of course, you have to have the practicalities of being able to print these images to see actually what happens. And of course, you can send 
the actual images away to people who do this online and have better quality printers than you're likely to have a home but you need to make sure that you've set your images up correctly to get the highest quality prints for both the camera you're using and the way in which you've set up the various properties within GIMP but please bear in mind that I've only showed you the software side of it you might find yourself making some experiments and finding the printing coming back and you're thinking oh blimey this isn't very good what have I done wrong um, but it's a question of actually Having a go now, printing some of the images off and see what gives you the better print. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.